Oh 
I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting and your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing. The circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. There's nothing greater, nothing stronger, nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. And we speak Jesus today over every situation and circumstance that we're going through. We speak Jesus today over every trial, every tribulation, every storm, every mountain, every valley. Because you are the God on the mountains and the God in the valleys. And there is nothing impossible for you. And we magnify your name today, Jesus. I pray for your healing. Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name. Spirit is 
change this last song I'm going to change this last song because I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit moving and I believe that sometimes even though we have plans the Lord has other plans and I feel so I feel in my spirit to go with this song and, 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 and keep with the leading of the Spirit today
You may be seated if you can. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm going to read scripture uh, today out of uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. It's Luke 17, 1 through 6. But I'm going to read the King James Version for, for this particular scripture. It says, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It is better for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck and he be cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespasses against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey. I wanted to read the King James Version because the wording um, of that particular type of tree is also known as a couple of other types. So for that, I wanted to make sure I used that one. So in Matthew, Mark, and John, you will see that the scripture says mountain. The context in Luke is different. In the book of Luke, the gospel is not talking about faith, but about offense. The sycamine tree is commonly mentioned in both Hebrew and Greek texts. It's also known by the names of sycamore fig tree or fig mulberry tree. So that's, that's where the wording comes in. If you want to move a sycamine tree, you cannot just cut it down. You remove it by the roots so that it does not grow back or spread. When we have a problem, we cannot just pray for the fruit. We have to pray for the root cause or it comes back. If your spouse is not saved, ask why. What are their experiences? You have to pray for the root cause, not the fruit of salvation. You can't just say, God save them. Why don't they want it? Sometimes the problem cannot be fixed without dealing with that root. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by that many be defiled. The word defiled is to stain a holy garment. Imagine that you go out to a nice dinner and you've chosen to wear your brand new white shirt. You end up at an Italian restaurant and no matter how careful you are, you will end up with at least one spot of sauce on that new shirt. The fall short in that part of the scripture in Hebrew talks about you releasing grace to others. God's grace does not fail or fall short. God's grace is not determined by the measure that we think someone deserves. God's grace does not fail. Do you have any root of bitterness? Having a root of bitterness does not just affect you. Many are affected by our choices, what we say, and what we do. Bitterness comes from a root in your heart that you have never allowed to heal. A root spreads and grows many branches. It spreads out and it'll affect first your spirit, second your thinking, third physically. It will eat you from the inside out with unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, hate, and offense. It defiles your spirit. When God separates the wheat from the tares, the good root will be damaged. 
good plants will be affected. So dealing with a carnal person in a church will hurt others around them. Then people become stained and defiled. A root could start with gossip. It affects others' opinions of a person or a situation. Their spirit now becomes defiled. This could cause their prayers and their praise to be blocked. If your spirit is defiled and you go to pray saying, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, God will say, Who are you? You may pray daily, but when your spirit is defiled, you must repent and get right with God. The reason that a root of bitterness defiles our spirit or vexes, troubles, torments us can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Do you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? Bitterness defiles the temple. The spirit of God dwells in your temple. Don't let bitterness in that temple. A bitter temple will wither and waste away. It will shrivel and you will be sick spiritually. If you continue to defile your spirit, the temple of God, then God will not prevent problems from coming to you. You step out of that protection. If the other gospel, in the other gospels, it says, you shall say. But the context of this book in Luke is different. When people are offended, this creates scandal. The Greek word for that is scandalone. In Luke 17, 1, Jesus' context is not unbelief or why they couldn't cast a demon out or about their faith. Luke 17, 2, the word child can mean a person young in the Lord or a child. Tying a millstone around your neck was capital punishment for the crime of murder. This is what makes Jesus' statement so serious. Luke 17, 3. If some trespasses violate you, go to them. If they repent, you forgive them and never talk about it again. God forgave you and it was never brought up again. Jesus talks about unforgiveness, offense, forgiving trespasses, going to your brother, and getting things right. Luke 17 is not about your level of faith. It is about forgiveness or not forgiveness. The scripture is talking about how you act after you have been offended, gossiping, being mean to others, angry, retaliating towards people. To forgive in Greek is to permanently dismiss, send away, or to remit. In the other gospels, faith was referred to, but not in Luke. The disciples simply said, increase our faith. The level of your level of faith you have in God will match your level of forgiveness. So you have to increase your forgiveness to increase your faith. Sit in that for a second. I did. Your level of faith can only in, be increased based on your level of releasing people from what they have done to you. This is our biggest hindrance, unforgiveness. You need to repent and forgive. The mountain in your life is unforgiveness. When the word says, say to the sycamine tree, in Greek, say means to say again and again. Say and say and say. Sometimes an offense is so deep and so painful that you have to forgive the same person daily. There are some things that you just don't forget, and you have to choose every day to forgive and forgive and forgive. So five facts about a sycamine tree. It has the deepest root of any tree in the Middle East. Roots of bitterness run deep. It flourishes in dry places with little water. Bitterness makes you dry and you won't feel God. It is the preferred wood in the Middle East for coffin making. 
you will feel dead. The fruit looks good, but it's bitter. It must be pollinated by the sting of a wasp. The sting of the enemy pollinates bitterness. You must say and say and say to the sycamine tree, say to yourself, in the name of Jesus, I will not walk in bitterness. Life is too short to be bitter. If you do the right thing, you get the best results. Focus on how big God is. If you focus on God, he will do great things in your life. You need to let go of some things. Don't be a sycamine Christian rooted in bitterness, unforgiveness, and offense. The judgment of God is coming soon, and I want to hear, welcome home. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So four ways to spot bitterness are, are you replaying the tapes? Replaying a situation over and over. Is my mouth out of control? Am I sick? Bitter people are found to have high blood pressure and are more likely to die from heart disease. Is my clan bitter? Who am I around? Three ways to kick bitterness to the curb is to adopt a zero bitterness policy, Ephesians 4.31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Fast and pray and believe the gospel. That's all. Well, I just found out that I am a sycamine tree. Man. That was powerful. That was powerful. That was a that was a wild moment because I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I have some forgiveness that I have to work through. Um, I have some bitterness that I need to work through. You know, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if my faith is measured by the amount of forgiveness that I am able to give. I have some work to do. That was very hum- that was very humbling, Sister Marie. It was very humbling. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't want to be a sick of mind Christian. It is difficult in this day and age not to find ourselves in that in that problem. Why? Because we've been raised in a forest full of sick of mind trees. And what is, and that is not to push blame on anybody, but that is the way that our society has has dictated us in so many churches, and so many doctrines, and so many theologies. It is um, planted in a sycamine forest. Man, you talk about eye opening. That was eye opening. A lot of roots and stuff that we need to get through. I believe that God's grace and mercy, his goodness and his mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. When we don't want that bitterness, we don't want that. Yeah, I I hate, I hate feeling the way that I feel sometimes. I hate wasting moments in my day arguing with myself because I already know how the scenario is going to play out. And in reality, I don't know how the scenario is going to play out. I hate, I hate that. And if I hate that in my heart, then the Lord knows I really want to get rid of that. There will be a time. But how fast it comes, I believe, is how fast we're willing to accept that there is an issue. Um, 
currently going through Celebrate Recovery because of bitterness and anger and hurt that I have to get through. I don't even realize until we were there um, the first time and someone gave a testimony and they were giving examples of certain things. And I said, well, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Well, that's me. And then the next thing I know, I find out that I have a road to recovery that I have to get through. Thank you for that today. That was that was amazing. Uh, with every head bowed and every eye closed today, precious Heavenly Father, Lord, help us get to the root of the cause of the issues that we are facing. We know that the biggest, most effective tool of the enemy is offense. And if we can, like your word says, not become offended so easily, to understand that there are reasons for everything. There are reasons. In the book of Ecclesiastes, your word declares that there's a time for every, there's a season for every time under heaven. As much as I want to use that to my advantage sometimes, I also forget the other 50% of that. There is a time to forgive. And Lord, I ask that you help me today. I ask that you help us today. As the book of Ephesians says, to put away all bitterness and wrath and anger and offense. Lord, that's easier said than done. But with you, all things are possible. I thank you for this body of believers, Lord. I thank you for endless grace. I thank you for each one of us because we all can relate to what the other is going through. And that's not by coincidence. That's not by happenstance. But that is by your divine call. I ask you, Lord, that as we travel about our week and our journey in this life, that when these things come up, that each one of us are here even more than we were before, even more than we will ever be, because this is the same journey that we are all on. None of us want to be a sick of mind Christian. Lord, let us sever the root and kill it so that the fruit that we bear is always refreshing for others. Lord, please be with us as we go about our ways this week, encouraging and strengthening and uplifting us. May your word be hidden within our hearts, Lord, that we may not sin against you. May your praise be continuously on our lips. May you answer every prayer according to your purpose and your will for your glory. For it is not by my might nor by my power, but by the Spirit of you, Lord. And today I give you all the praise, I give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.